Now what happens when you have derivatives of logs with absolute values in them? Well, if u is differentiable and u does not equal 0, then the derivative with respect to x of the log of u is u prime over u. You see we lose those absolute values. Now this is one of the proofs that I really think you need to understand. Let um, u be positive. So if u is always positive, then it's pretty straightforward that the derivative with respect to x of log of u is u prime over u. Because when u is positive, the absolute value of u is equal to u. What about, and this is the one that gets people, what happens when u is negative? Then the absolute value of u is equal to minus u. So when I take the derivative with respect to x of the log of the absolute value of u, let me make that a u instead of an x, I'm getting carried away here, All right, this is the derivative with respect to x, because the absolute value of u is minus u. Um, this is the log of minus u, which is, let's see, the, the derivative of my argument. So this is minus u prime divided by u. The whole argument, the whole argument is minus u. So those two negative signs cancel and it winds up being u prime divided by u. Let's look at an example. What if I wanted the derivative of the log of the absolute value of cosine? Now let's look first at what does the absolute value of cosine look like. If cosine goes up and, oh, that's sine, isn't it? Let's do cosine instead of sine. All right, cosine starts at one and goes down and then it becomes negative. The absolute value of cosine does this right here. All right, so f prime of x is equal to 1 over the cosine of x times the derivative of cosine. And the derivative of cosine is minus sine of x. So I can rewrite this as minus tangent of x.